flexor tendon injuries treatment these are the topics we'll be talking about in the treatment and post-operative rehab flexor pollicis longus tendon injury complications and tenolysis treatment in zone 2 flexor tendon laceration repair of one slab compared to repairing both slabs of the flexor digitorum superficialis may result in improved tendon gliding. When do you usually repair the tendon? You try to repair it early. It ideally it should be done within two weeks. More surgeons are interested in doing the surgery under local anesthesia. And after the surgery is done, then the surgeon will ask the patient to move the fingers and the surgeon will assess the tension on the repair. Partial laceration of the flexor tendon should be repaired when the percentage of the tendon lacerated is more than 60%. Partial laceration of less than 60% of the tendon width can be treated conservatively. If you have a 50% laceration of the flexor tendon with triggering, trim the fraying edges. If there is a young child that has repair of the lacerated flexor tendons, immobilize the patient postoperatively with a cast for four weeks. A repair with four strand coarse suture with epitendinous suture will allow immediate controlled active flexion postoperatively. You will do flexor tendon repair and controlled postoperative rehab. The repair should be strong to allow early therapy which will prevent adhesions. The most important factor that determine the strength of the flexor tendon repair is the number of suture strands that crosses the repair. Dorsal suture placement may be stronger. No gap is allowed. If there is a gap more than three millimeter will be failure of the tendon repair. Preserve A2 and A4 pulleys in the fingers and the oblique pulley in the thumb. Otherwise, you may lose flexion of the fingers. Ebitendinous suture can increase the strength by about 10 to 50%. Early active motion decreases adhesions and increases the excursion of the tendon. The rupture occurs in about 15 to 20% of cases. Repair fails at the suture knots. Repair is weak earlier and the strength of the repair increases between three to six weeks. Protect the repair by flexing the rest and the MCP joint. Usually, dorsal block splint is used for six weeks. The rest is flexed to 30 degrees and the MCP joint is flexed to 70 degrees. Leave the IP and DIP joint extended. Allow passive flexion of the fingers. At six weeks, the patient can do active range of motion of the fingers. At eight weeks, the patient can do some resistance. When do you do flexor tendon reconstruction? We do flexor tendon reconstruction and post-operative rehab if the primary repair failed or if you have a chronic injury. In this case, you'll find that the patient does not have an active flexion, but the patient has passive movement. If the sheath is intact, you will do single stage flexor tendon graft. But if the sheath collapsed, you will do two stage flexor tendon grafting. Injury of the flexor tendon of the thumb. In fracture distal radius, if you put a plate over the volar aspect of the radius through a volar approach and the patient cannot bend the thumb IB joint after surgery, you look at the x-ray and you find that the plate position is volar to the lip of the distal radius. So the flexor 
Palaces long extend on ruptures because the plate is placed distal to the watershed line and the volar part of the plate will protrude beyond the volar lip of the radius and will rub on the tendon and rupture the flexor palaces longus tendon. If you have a flexor tendon injury to the thumb, so no active flexion of the IP joint and it is chronic, but there is a passive motion. So what do you do? You take the flexor digitorum superficialis of the ring finger and transfer it to the insertion of the flexor pollicis longus. Complications. Adhesion formation is one of the most important complications that can happen in zone two injuries. If you have a jersey finger and you try to repair the flexor digitorum profundus, don't advance the flexor digitorum profundus tendon more than one centimeter because it may cause quadrigia and contracture of the tendon. Wide awake flexor tendon repair is gaining popularity and this technique is done under local anesthesia utilizing lidocaine and the epinephrine. This will allow the intraoperative assessment of the repair by getting the awake patient to flex the digit actively and you observe the repair. When do you do tenolysis? You do tenolysis of the flexor tendon when there is mismatch between active and passive flexion. So there is no active flexion, but the patient has passive range of motion because there is full passive range of motion, so there is no joint contraction. In this case, the motion is limited by adhesions. Treat by aggressive therapy first for at least three months before you do the tenolysis. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.